Can I just ask you with Tell everything that Kaylee just told us? <laughs> yeah, I will. I'll make sure. Well, I hope that she's seeing this now. Uh, when you consider the job that Jay Powell has to do, I'm not going to ask you to comment on the Fed, but if you're considering the consumer right now, what is more dangerous, mm-hmm. rising inflation or a slowing job market? Well, I think the uh, fact that the job market has remained so tight uh, that the unemployment rate has been below 4% for over a year and a half is uh, an integral part of a virtuous cycle uh, that is ongoing and that really wasn't part of uh, your kind of doom loop that you just took took us all through. Um, and look, w- when you have a, an economy that's 68% consumer spending and you have an unemployment rate that that's low and you're seeing real wage gains, that is, and I think In fact, uh, Chair Powell uh, emphasized this this morning, when you're seeing uh, wages grow faster than inflation, uh, that really helps that momentum keep going. So in fact, I think there's a complementarity there. We can continue to maintain strong consumer spending, real wage gains, a tight labor market, and continue to ease off on inflation. That's certainly been the pattern uh, over over the last few quarters, and it's it's been a, a very important one. Knowing the path that the Fed chair is going to be taking, how are you setting up for next year? Are you concerned that the continued aggressive rise in rates is going to mean a slowdown of the economy? Well, one thing I want to bring to the conversation that uh, you've been having for the last five or ten minutes uh, is this issue of resiliency. Uh, I think you have to admit that this economy has taken a whole lot of hits. I mean, uh, we had the highest inflation in 40 years. Of course, we had a once in a century pandemic. We had Putin's horrific invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and with all of that, you know, here we are today. So either economic policymakers are getting some things right that maybe aren't quite part of this conversation, uh, or, or say probably and, uh, the kind of um, uh, uh, positive dynamics that I just described, where you have a strong labor market supporting consumer spending, uh, is much more of a flywheel than you know maybe quite recognized. And I think the fact that real wages are growing uh, is is a key part of this. And and so as long as we can maintain the tight job market and continue to e- see inflation ease, uh, I don't see why those trends can't uh, persist. Well, I'll tell you what, we heard I'm a lot about oh, Bidenomics. I, we, sorry, Jerry, yes. we heard a lot about Bidenomics at the big Republican debate this week. I want to just bring you to Milwaukee for a moment and have you respond to what we heard. Let's listen. Joe Biden's Bidenomics. Joe Biden has uh, weakened America. We must reverse Bidenomics. The loss of $10,000 of spending power for the average family. The war on energy. Unlock American energy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Runaway spending that launched the worst inflation in 40 years. Reform the U.S. Fed. Stabilize the U.S. dollar. We've got to deal with the long-term national debt issues. It's time for an accountant in the White House. Your reaction to that, Jared, is the White House tries to sell Bidenomics as a concept. We've seen, of course, and talked to you about it uh, several times about the way it has not been connecting, at least according to polls, with people. This is the alternative vision, though, that voters will have next year. How does that play, in your view? So I'm not going to talk about the politics at all. That's uh, just not what what, what I do. Uh, I will talk about Bidenomics. In fact, I'll talk about it uh, in the context of Uh, the tailwinds I just took you through. Um, I talked about how the strong labor market, consumer spending, real wage gains, how important they are right now. I think equally important is the investment agenda of Bidenomics. Another tailwind here is the uh, process of standing up a domestic semiconductor industry, a domestic clean energy product industry, domestic EV and electric batteries. Those are, those are jobs here, uh, good jobs for uh, American workers. And this isn't a, a one week, month or quarter endeavor. This is a long term play. These are deep investments. It's also catalyzing private investment to come in off the sidelines, and we've seen hundreds of billions of dollars of complementary investment in that regard. Now, when it comes to Republican opposition, uh, I I will say what I certainly don't understand is why they would want to consider repealing 
a, a level of investment that the private sector is clearly highly enthusiastic about, not to mention direct cost cuts in the area of health care, lower cost for health coverage, lower cost for prescription drugs, lower cost for insulin. Uh, we also have uh, the IRS. Uh, working much more effectively to meet the needs of taxpayers and to close the tax gap by going after tax cheats above 400,000, in fact, way above 400,000 in terms of uh, AGI, in terms of their income. So all of those uh, uh, we, we view as, as completely positive. Yes. You're talking about workers. And at the moment, what is really prevalent is the fact that we could potentially see a strike. Uh, in just three weeks' time from UAW, the president, talking to reporters, says he's concerned jobs could be displaced. Does he potentially mean by automation or by workers? If there were to be a strike, he's saying he's worried about jobs being displaced. I don't know the context of that comment. I just haven't been read in on that yet, but I'll, I'll learn about that and we can talk about it on a, another time. I will say as far as... Uh, as the UAW goes, look, we know we have a very pro-union president, but I hope you saw the statement that he released about a week ago where he talked about the importance of a fair deal for both sides. You know, we have a very uh, strong economy. We have our auto sector coming back strong. Uh, we have deep investment in uh, 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 this transition to electric vehicles. So there's a, a lot going right in that sector. Uh, again, real wage gains, particularly, by the way, for production workers, for uh, workers who are more blue collar. So we, we want to continue those trends going. We're not going to comment, uh, of course, on uh, any granular aspects of a negotiation that's uh, ongoing. Uh, but, that, but, but read the president's statement on that point. I think he was unequivocal about the importance of working that out.